concerns now about claims of censorship across social media platforms. The president weighing in on this today, tweeting this this weekend. Social media is totally discriminating against Republicans, uh, conservative voices, speaking loudly and clearly for the Trump administration. We won't let that happen. They are closing down the opinions of many people on the right, while at the same time doing nothing to others. Joining us right now to talk more about that is Candace Owens. She is director of Urban Engagement at Turning Point USA, along with Ed Rollins here in the studio, former White House advisor to President Reagan. Reagan and Fox News contributor. Great to see you both. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. So, Candace, let me kick this off with you because you've actually been a victim of this. You were kicked off Facebook and Twitter. I was. In the last two weeks, I've had suspensions from both of those platforms. And this is a really important issue. I cannot stress this enough to everybody that is conservative and everybody that supports Trump, especially those that support Trump. I think what they're starting to understand is they're trying to assess how Trump won. And really, he ran an aggressive social media campaign. Um, and, and they see that people that were able to impact, they lost control because so many voices popped up and they no longer had to rely on just CNN, MSNBC, or Fox. There were all of these social media stars that were coming out and speaking on behalf of him that had a major impact and now those voices are getting silenced. So so you think he won the social media war then? That is exactly right. He won the social media war, and that's what they see as the biggest threat for them going into midterms and heading into the reelect in 2020. So it's incredibly important that we speak out all the time. People said, oh, it's Alex Jones. He's a conspiracy theorist. That does not matter. The, the implication here is that Spotify, YouTube, and Facebook on the very same day banned somebody off of their platforms. That means that they are working together. You know, one of the issues, Ed, is that I think the detractors of President Trump are going insane because he's having such good outcomes. I mean, his economic policy has produced 4.1 percent economic growth. We've got the lowest unemployment that we've seen in, in decades, lowest unemployment for the African-American community ever. And so they're out of their minds that the outcomes are so positive going into the midterm well, elections. Well, equally as important, uh, and, and a lot of people said the social media that he used, uh, his tweeting and what have you, was, was detrimental to him. It was not at all. He has dominated the, for the last two and a half years. No, no president, no candidate has ever dominated the media, both the, the cable news, the social media, what have you. He understands it well. His people understand it well. Uh, and I think to a certain extent, they see it as a threat. Every, every day, people are sitting there waiting for his tweet to respond <laughs> one way or the other. And, and if all of a sudden it's a one-sided game in which you stop the people who are supportive of him, uh, then it's not, it's not fair. And it's, uh, it's certainly a violation of those people's rights. Yeah, but, but Candace, I mean, you've got a lot of shaming going on. I mean, the left, their, their main strategy is just to shame you, name call, so that you just go away and stop stop talking positively about Trump's policies. That's correct. But look, that's actually hurting them. That's actually det detrimental to them. It's not it's nonsensical at this point. Think about the fact they call me a white supremacist. I'm, I'm African-American. I'm and I, I speak vocally in support of Trump and they say that I'm a white supremacist. It's hurting them because it's starting to look like they're complete. They have nothing left and they've called everybody everything. Listen, there's nothing much more that they could stick on Trump and he rose above it each and every time. So the name calling is desperate. It's an effort that won't work for them. Well, it's interesting because Rasmussen says that black voter support support for the president nearly doubled. That makes me smile, yes. So that means that despite the fact that they have called everything and everyone racist at every single term, the black community is no longer listening. Do you want to know why? Because the results are in and he is helping us. We are on the rise. We are getting jobs. He's attacking the illegal immigration issue, which negatively impacts the black community. So at the end of the day, results speak louder than words. Nobody knows the elections better than you. What, is, what are you seeing in terms of the midterm elections, Ed Rollins? Go, we've got 80 days left. Well, there's a lot going to happen the next 80 days. Uh, Historically, uh, in the last 21 midterm elections, the president's party has lost 30, 30 seats and four Senate seats. That's not going to happen. I pre I'll predict that right today. Really? We may lose five. We may lose 10. You're going to lose some seats just because of the, the makeup of the, of the Congress. But it's not, there's no blue wave out there. Uh, the Senate, uh, which we had big opportunities, have not turned out to be quite so. There's probably five to eight uh, Senate seats on both sides that are in play. I think we'll hold the Senate. I think we'll hold the House. Uh, margins may be smaller in the House, but it's certainly going to hold it. Wow. These are big predictions. All right, let's take a short break. Sure. We've got more time with Candace Owens and Ed Rollins, and I want to get your take on what races in particular are most important sure. going into November. Stay with our panel, Candace Owens and Ed Rollins, with a look at the midterms, the economy, and the GOP message. Candace, with this focus now on conservatives possibly being censored, uh, we're expecting people like Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter, and others, uh, Sheryl Sandberg, to testify in front of Congress in the fall. What, what would you expect from that? Do you think this changes? 
Um, here's what I'll say. I actually think that Twitter is a bit of an anomaly. I don't, I don't see them working in cahoots with Facebook and the other platforms. And I know personally that Jack Dorsey has reached out and Twitter has reached out to a lot of conservatives and had meetings behind closed doors in trying to at least begin talking about fixing this problem. Um, he actually has the biggest platform for, con for conservatives in general. I myself have had conversations with Twitter. Um, so I'm holding out a candle for Twitter and I'm hopeful that they are trying to make some changes. Um, not as nervous for them, but it is, as I said, the most important issue. Facebook is is a problem. I think that they are trying to intentionally go against conservatives and silence voices. We saw this week with PragerU. I mean, is there a safer conservative platform uh, aside from their videos? Um, they are straightforward. They are direct. They are non-confrontational. And somehow they got banned and shadow banned from Facebook. That's right. extremely problematic, even though Facebook did issue an apology. Um, so that's really going to be what to watch is what happens here with Facebook and, of course, YouTube, which is outright banning conservative platforms. Whether it's the banning of conservative platforms, Ed Rollins, or this, this FBI, Department of Justice uh, in, investigation by Congress of, of their behavior during the 2016 election, is that part of what changed going into the midterms? Oh, sure. There's no question about it. I mean, first of all, Facebook was totally misused by the Russians. There's no question about that. That's what they ought to be cleaning up, not ordinary citizens that have a different point of view. It's a powerful vehicle, and people now realize it's a powerful vehicle. These issues are complicated, and I think the country today basically sees uh, a real polarization. Uh, they like what Trump's doing on the economic issues and what have you. Uh, the, the rest of it is a lot of background noise, and they don't quite understand who's right or who's wrong. But I think at this point in time, uh, he, has, he has managed to hold his base, and his base is going to be very important in these midterms. So you think there won't be a blue wave? No, I, I predict at this point in time, and I've been doing this for 50 years, I don't predict. There's no blue wave. Uh, there is, there'll be some seats that'll be lost, just as there ordinary is, but that's mainly about the retirements. We have too many retirements and in, in, in some of these open seats. But you're not going to, and it's all over the country. It'll be a couple seats in California, a couple seats here, a couple seats there, in which you're not going to, this is not a national election. This is a person by person So you election. think they hold the majority? I think Republicans hold a majority in both the House and the Senate. I think the missed opportunity is we had plenty of chances to pick up some Senate seats. We may pick up two or three. We should have picked up ten. Candace, real quick on this FBI investigation, we're covering all of the ins and outs. Now, Bruce Orr, the center of this, how does that play into all of this? What's your take on what took place during the 2016 election? Look, I, everything that took place during the 2016 election is is problematic, and it's something that needs to be addressed. And and as we're also watching this Paul Manafort trial play out, um, and seeing that they really had nothing, what Robert M Mueller is banking on is absolutely nothing. They are just trying to take down Trump. And this goes back to why midterms is so important for Republicans uh, to present a united front, uh, because we understand that the enemy is on the left, that they are uh, doing everything that they can to disrupt this presidency. And I have no doubt that if they do uh, win in the terms, which I don't think they will, that they are going to be advocating for having this president removed. Yes. Yeah. The midterms could not be more important right now. It's, real quick. the most important in my lifetime. Yeah. All right. Ed Rollins, Candace Owens, great to see you Thank both. You. Thank you so much. Great conversation. Great panel.